The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. The, the background of Obama is so created and orchestrated. The very fact that he and his wife arbitrarily just gave back their law bar card just makes no sense to me whatsoever. Have you dealt with that issue? You know, we did, and we ran into roadblocks. You cannot get the investigational files from the Illinois State Bar trying to look into that matter. But nobody does that. Nobody would go through that whole educational process mm -hmm. and then surrender their bar license for no apparent reason. And I would suspect that Obama, in his case, he surrendered that because there was going to be some uh, misrepresentations made on his application. Because we know, for one, that does ask you a question if you had uh, ever used another name or an alias. Now, this is the only sitting American president that's got four aliases. I mean, this guy's got four AKAs that he can go wow. by. So we know that that question would be something we'd like to look into. And then by his own admission, he admitted to using illicit narcotics in his college days. And he admitted to using marijuana, I believe, in his high school days. And there's a question on about that on, uh, on a bar application, is if you ever indulge in the use of illicit narcotics be kind of curious to see what that answer is. Now, somebody did put pressure on him or pressure on the bar to investigate his application. It was right around that time that I believe he did surrender his license. So you know that application is suspect. Mm -hmm. Surrender his license, ladies and gentlemen. It just makes no sense whatsoever. That'd be like me after I went to nursing school for six years, uh, nursing school for five years. And then six years after I became a nurse, I'd say, oh, never mind, I really don't need that. I, what was I thinking to go through all that schooling? I mean, it just makes no sense. So, But these no sense things are not making uh, an impact. Where are the attorneys in this country? I think they don't know. I don't think they realize that he surrendered his, his law license. And I think that's a huge issue that needs to be brought before the people. Well, I, I think it's a huge, a huge issue, and I think... To answer the question, a lot of people, even though they may be suspicious, out of fear of being ostracized and called a birth or whatever you know the title is these days, you know, they don't want the headache. And you know, you see the harassment that was done by federal organizations, federal you know federal federal agencies against people that spoke out against this administration, and you can kind of understand, you know, it's intimidation. And for Sheriff Arpaio's position, he's a cop. He's been battling these guys for the last five, six years that I can remember. And, you know, they've come after him pretty hard. And here's, oh, here's yeah. a guy, 52-year law enforcement officer, 30 years of it. He was the head of the DEA in Texas. You know, I, I, I don't understand what they think they're going to accomplish by threatening Joe Arpaio or investigating Joe Arpaio. Sheriff Arpaio is not going to put 52 years of reputation on the line on this issue if he didn't believe wholeheartedly in what we were doing and the evidence that we have. Without a doubt. And he has been attacked severely. I cannot imagine. You know, at his age, he is one of the sharpest, most together people, most active people. And you say 52 years in law enforcement. Wow, he is not going to back down, I don't believe, on this or any other issue that he believes in. When we come back from this break, let's see, it's 29 after the hour. I'm going to ask, what is the second thing next to the birth, uh, birther, the birth uh, certificate issue that concerns you the most about Obama? We'll be back with Mike Zulo after this break. Stay tuned. We're talking to Mike Zulo today. He heads up the cold case posse for Sheriff Arpaio on the fraud of the birth certificate. You know, if I were to ask you, what would be the second thing next to the birth certificate that causes you the most concern about Obama's history? And I'm sure you've looked at the whole picture, not just one thing. But what would that second thing be, Mike? Well, the second thing for me would be his selective service registration card. Um, in our very first press conference, um, that Sheriff Apollo uh, put on back in uh, in 2012. We um, showed the Selective Service card with the post office canceling stamp, which should should have a month, day, and a four-digit year stamp, 
And Obama's compared to numerous other ones that we got through a FOIA request from Selective Service. His canceling stamp is the only one that represents a year of 1980, except absent is the one in nine, and all you have there is the eight zero. And no other stamp is like that, and on any other card that we had the privilege to examine, even ones that came from the same post office at the same time within a month or so. Um, and it was later determined by us that that was, in fact, a 2008 date stamp that was severed in between the two zeros and then inverted to make it look like an 80 and placed onto a card and stamped, fictitiously stamped is our belief. Um, and we demonstrated that uh, in a video on how that was accomplished. And that has ramifications to it. Um, it is, by law, if you did not register for selective service, I believe you're looking at five-year imprisonment and $250,000 fine. But on top of that, you cannot serve in public office. He cannot take the position that he has. He cannot seek that office. So that's really a, a problem for them. And uh, that's going to have to get investigated further. We do have a little bit of a jurisdictional issue on that as well because it was never offered to us. It was information received during the course of an investigation. And I think once we get past the birth certificate, we'll delve deeper into that. All right, and I want to open up the phone lines because I want to let other people have a chance to talk to you. 855-995-6923, 855-995-6923 if you have a question or comment for our guest today, Mike Zulo. You know, there are a lot of people out there that are addressing other issues. 9-11, what happened at uh, Sandy Hook. Uh, there's some very good investigations that are taking place on these other issues. And the IRS um, targeting has sort of put some fear into some people. But I think we're going to have to overcome that by the idea that there are going to be enough of us that are going to stand and then stand and, and really use you and Sheriff Arpaio as an inspiration to do this. Because there are many things that need to be opened up in this country, and they need to be opened wide so that there is the real transparency that they uh, said, allegedly, that that would happen. What are your thoughts on the people that are trying to tell the truth and, and really are investigating other issues? I think it's a difficult road. I can tell you from my own experience it's a difficult road. We are sitting on a felony. We know we have a felony here. We know we have an individual whose background cannot be confirmed. We know we have an individual who has not been vetted by the federal government or any other agency to hold the position he's in, and trying to get people to listen to you is almost like screaming into a pillow. And when you don't have the media behind you, the problem is your message doesn't get past the borders of your own town or state. And we've experienced this with our two press conferences. We had a complete media background. Now, I live in Arizona, and I have relatives on the East Coast that have no idea of what I've been doing for the past 21 months because we haven't told them I've been using it as a test. If they tell me, I know the message is getting out there. And to date, I've heard absolutely nothing. So that's the biggest problem. I, and I believe these people are really doing the service. I think uh, you can see the cover-up and the magnitude of cover-up and lies that just come out of this administration. And it's not only this administration, but this one has been the most blatant. And you can see in the Benghazi hearings the amount of cover-up that is going on. The Boston Marathon bombing, I mean, I haven't looked into that personally, but I have some problems. I especially have some problems with, you know, the amount of police officers opened up on that guy, you know, sitting behind the engine block in a boat. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was like a barrage of fire. That was yes. a death machine. Well, and, and his I, brother and I also. I personally have problems with that. I, I do. I understand. Yeah, I do. I you know. I I can't really speak intelligently to it because I haven't researched it. I, I don't have any time, but I do have. I have a lot of questions. And what well, my concern is at this point is they are starting to use the police officer as an extension of carrying out their missions, and absolutely. that's problematic. That's scary. Absolutely. You know, I. I it's, this is not about me, but I, I, I uh, whistle blew on the fact that the U.S. government sold biologicals to Iraq as part of the Gulf War. 
And I screamed and screamed and screamed the same thing, and I thought, wow, everyone will want to know this, that we were set up for that war. And it has taken me years to be able to get people to understand that, and even people today don't know that we created that war and created the situation. And I, I can really sympathize with you and hope that you will use this venue anytime you need it, because believe me, we are here for you, and want to, we want to keep this story in front of the people. Uh, John, who is our first caller in Pennsylvania? Peter in Pennsylvania. All right, we're going to take some calls now for uh, Mike Zulo. Peter, you're on with Mike Zulo. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Joyce Riley. Uh, Mike Zulo, I was wondering, uh, my thought is that, A, if this guy is the key, the undoing of this fraudulent presidency is the, is the uh, singular key uh, that unlocks the rest of all the rest of the problems, stopping the... Uh, uh, the bail-in and financial crash and the and the and the you know connectivity to the one world you know UN system so on like that. But this is the uh, the skeleton key that that can uh, protect the United States from financial catastrophe, being on the hook for all the financial derivative, so on like this. And I want to know if you that's your opinion and what is the best way for other people to spread your information so that, you know, you that they can get your contact information or what you have available as proof. Okay. That's all. Um, Mr. Zulo? Well, I, I think that, you know, this does pose a significant constitutional issue if everything we say is, is brought to light and it's absolutely correct. Um, I do fear, and I'm talking to you now from my private life, I do fear that we are too far gone financially at this point, not to suffer some real pain. The magnitude of the pain, though, can be lessened by the direction that we, we take. Um, I, I am very concerned that it is just a systematic plan to overload our economic system to put us all in a state of dependency and ultimately, you know, change the foundations of our very country. Absolutely. Um, can this undo it? There's going to be a consequence either way we do this. And I, I personally believe that if I'm going to pay a price, I want to pay it for just standing on the side of truth. Because if you buy this lie, the ones that are going to come after this will make this look like a walk in the park. Wow. And you can't stand true. for the lies. That is scary. The website, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, that you can go to to find out what you can do and to donate to this operation because they are totally on their own for the cost on this, is mcs0ccp.org. Go to the website, thepowerhour.com. It's there under today's guest. Click on it and go to the website to support what they're doing. Thank you very much, Peter, in Pennsylvania. Let's go to Chris in Florida. Chris, you're on the air with Mike Zulo. Go ahead, please. Good morning. At obamacrimes.com, there's an excellent article that um, Sheriff Mack had acknowledged uh, as being very important uh, called What About Obama's Indonesian Citizenship by Attorney Philip Byrd. And even it, essentially, even if we were to assume that Obama was born in Hawaii, of course, I don't believe he was. I don't believe that the birth certificates are legitimate. But if we assume he was, we have no evidence that he petitioned for naturalization by the age of 25 and his uh, mother had surrendered his uh, citizenship in order to attend school in Indonesia as required by Indonesian law. Now, to even petition for naturalization in the U.S. by age 25, you'd have to find an affidavit relinquishing Indonesian citizenship and send it to Indonesia. And uh, the current uh, website of the State Department says that a parent can't surrender a child citizenship. That's the false comeback I've heard when I've called other uh, false uh, progressive talk shows. That, but, of course, the law at the time was that in order to regain his citizenship, he would have had to. We have no. He would have had to have petition for naturalization. And of course, in his own uh, book, Dreams of My Father, he uh, writes that he renewed his Indonesian passport when he traveled to Pakistan, which is why he had to stop in Indonesia first. So I think that issue is uh, at least as important as the birth certificate issues. All right. Go ahead, um, Mike. I your response. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.